Hello everyone, welcome back and we are starting section 3 of this course data collection and routing protocols. In the very first video of this section we will be looking at data routing and floating logarithms. So data routing is defined as a process of transferring data packets from a node to any other node in a network where the goal is to use such routing techniques that allows nodes to use minimum power during the data transferring. To achieve this every node maintains a routing table which tells that the message M coming from node I and destined for node J should be forwarded to neighbor node K. In order to use minimum power, we need to find the shortest path. For that, we will use the Discra logarithm again. In the last section, we got ourselves familiar with how this logarithm works for simple graphs, but now we are going to implement the same for digraphs. We have already studied about the trees and spanning trees, so the definition for this logarithm will be as follows. Message from any node V to destination node U, also known as sync node or the root node, should follow a path along a spanning tree routed at the sync node. So this will allow us to construct a spanning tree from all the nodes towards the sync node. That will eventually gonna make a sync tree. If a neighbor N of the node U knows about a path to another node W, then U discovers a path to W via node N, which can be simply illustrated in this way. Node N knows about W and it informs it to the node U. And eventually we'll gonna let nodes tell their neighbors on the shortest path on the other nodes discovered so far. I'll put in the same example graph as we studied in our last section. Routing table is shown in the right for all other nodes directing towards V0. I have constructed the shortest path on the bold black arrowed lines in the same way as we did in the section 2 last video. These all entries in the table on the right are showing the shortest routes from the given node to the V0 node, which is our sync node. For example, if a message M destined for V0 arrives at V2, then V2 is going to look up on its table and route this message to its neighbor node V0, which in this case is our destination node. If the same message arrived at V1 instead of V2, V1 routing table will tell that forward this message to V3. And moving on, when it reached to V3, it will gonna forward this message to its neighbor, which again is our destination node V0. And finally, M reaches its destination with the shortest path. So this table is constructed for only the sync node V0. In the same way, every node will gonna have entries in their routing table for every other sync node. As an example, look at the V2 node table. It stores the information of all the possible sync nodes and also tells us that which neighbor node we want to forward this packet and what would be the total weight of the path from this node to the destination node. If you look at the node 2 routing table V6, let's say a packet is coming to V2 which is destined for V6, then V2 knows that I need to forward this packet to V1 here. The total weight of this whole route will gonna be 13. So 2 plus 7 plus 4 makes 13. In the same way all of the other nodes construct their routing table. Data collection a procedure technique to gather data wirelessly from unattended nodes installed on the remote fields. The idea and the motivation behind this is it's inconvenient and expensive to send resources into the field to collect data from every single node. That's why data collection techniques allows us to send a trigger at a single node wirelessly which propagates the data collection request to all of the other nodes in a network. One of the way is the distributed data aggregation where the data is processed on its way to the sink. In this way all of the nodes work equally to save energy because eventually processing cost is much much lower than the transmission cost. In a dense network data is correlated so aggregated functions like min, max, average, sum over the data in a whole network are often more important than the data of the individual nodes. So let's say for two temperature nodes who have found themselves so far in the network, one of them collects the temperature from another one 
and sends the aggregated value of both the temperatures to the third one and so on. Finally, the last node gets the overall aggregated value of the temperature of the entire network. Other way is quite similar to the first one. Instead, nodes see the network as a rational data where users can control and monitor network's health and status by using SQL queries. There are three types of data collection approaches, gossip, tree-based, and floating. I've constructed it in a triangle to define the properties of each. So let us look at the floating first. In the data floating technique, the word floating is taken literally. Data is simply floated into the network, which as a result utilizes every path on a network, including the shortest. It is indeed quite simple to implement. The algorithm looks something like this. So we start off with some specific node, let's say an I. N i sends the message m to all of its neighbor nodes. When n queued sees the same message from one of the neighbor of n i, which can be like n p. If n q has never seen this message before, it is going to forward it to its neighbors. Else, n q is going to discard that message. 